I've been working at the wiring in the enclosure, and one of the things that I'm installing are these meters that are uh, measure volts and amps. I have one for each one of the stepper motor power supplies, the X, Y, and Z axis. These are inexpensive. I bought them on Amazon. I think it was five of them for less than $15. I tend to like to have information of uh, the systems that I'm operating. In my car, I like to have gauges that tell me everything that's going on. So in this enclosure, I'll be able to monitor the power supplies. My theory with this is, for one thing, the power supplies are uh, inexpensive. So having the voltage readout will allow me to, to monitor the voltages and see if they drift. But more importantly, I'm interested in the amperage. With these stepper drivers, they automatically dial back the amperage to the motors uh, when they don't need as much. And when the load gets heavier, the stepper drivers will increase the amperage. So what I'm thinking is when the, for instance, when I'm homing an axis, it will drive uh, up to a homing switch or limit switch. And it, let's say it draws 0.5 amps during that move uh, is typical for it. So then later down the road, let's say that the uh, ways need some oil and the amps increase to 0.6 or 0.7. I can tell that the there's more load on the motors and something has changed and something should be addressed. Um, same thing the other direction, if it typically draws about 0.5 amps to, to do a homing sequence, then if it's all of a sudden drawn 0.4 amps, maybe my gibs are out of adjustment and the, the ways are loose. So it, it just gives me another piece of uh, information that I can use to kind of keep an eye on the mill and the, the system and see what it's doing. Now, I don't want to get your hopes up here that you're going to see me power this up and all the lights come on. Currently, the uh, enclosure is empty for the most part. I've got the, the board behind me and I'm uh, working on the wires for it. But what I wanted to show you with this video, um, these are, are one of these things, they're inexpensive, so they're really popular but they have many complaints in the ratings that I've seen on them about the mounting solution, which admittedly is really bad. The, uh, the bezel that goes around the outside here is only about one millimeter. So when you cut the opening, if you don't cut it quite accurately, the entire uh, meter can kind of slip through or you'll have um, gaps around the outside. So that's one thing. But the more pressing problem are these clips. Now, I don't know if you can see them here. I'll bring this up. Typically, these when you press this in, these will squeeze in and uh, grab on the back of the um, panel that you're putting them in, and that's what will hold it in place. The problem with these is, is that the, the circuit board on the inside is so tight against the clips that the clips can't move in in order to squeeze in and get past the outer lip here. Um, so anyway, the, what the solution that I came up with here was actually to remove the circuit board. Uh, there's little tabs here on the side. You can grab onto that, pull it out a little bit, and lift the circuit board out. With the circuit board removed, now there's nothing stopping them. Here's the lens inside with the volts and amps. But uh, the, the plastic shell on this here will flex uh, quite significantly. So with the circuit board removed, you can pop them in and then place the circuit board back into it from the other side. This even itself, uh, I ran into a problem where the uh, the thickness of the plastic in the case would push these in and hold them in, hold the clips slightly in, which deformed the plastic shell and made it bow in on the sides and then the circuit board wouldn't go in. I considered filing these down or shrinking them, but so what I did to allow those clips to seat properly, I beveled the edges on the inside of the case. I used a drum sanding sleeve on my Dremel and just beveled them in. That leaves the outside face of the case still rectangular, but the inside, it relieves it a little bit, both in thickness, and it puts a bevel on it that slightly matches the uh, bevel on those clips, and that allows them to come in and, and expand out 
so that the circuit board can then be reinserted. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like from the back side here. There's the case coming in. Drop in the lens with the volts and the amps. And then the circuit board, I put it in on the left hand side first and then the right hand side just presses in. And there it is installed. So that's just a quick overview of the installation of these volt amp meters. And I'll leave you all here with a sneak peek of the back plane that I'm getting wired up. I've got some Molex connectors going on it. And um, what happened with this is I'm, uh, I ran out of heat shrink tubing for the label printer. So I'm kind of on a work hold here for multiple days while I'm waiting for that to be delivered. And according to the tracking, it hasn't even shipped yet. So we'll uh, see when that shows up and I'll continue on with the wiring. Enjoy.